You need to know this. After he met with President Obama the day after the election and actually behaved himself for more than an hour, some people out there, people who apparently have not been paying attention for the past year and a half, began to talk about how Trump might not be all that dangerous after all. The racism and bigotry he displayed on the campaign trail, these people said, was just a cynical ploy to dupe voters into electing someone who is really just a moderate Republican. Boy, were they wrong. The Trump administration is now shaping up to be a real basket of deplorables in every sense of the word. First, Trump picked Steve Bannon, the former head of white nationalist website Breitbart News, to be his chief strategist. That alone should have raised alarm bells across Washington because Breitbart regularly runs stories about evil Muslims coming to take your town, the greatness of the Confederate flag, and does feminism make women ugly? Bannon sat down with The Hollywood Reporter and gave an interview. Here is what Steve Bannon said, Steve Bannon being the um, you know, secret advisor in the dark shadows for the Trump administration. All right, so uh, darkness is good, he says. Dick Cheney, Darth Vader, Satan, that's power. It only helps us when they get it wrong, when they're blind to who we are and what we're doing. We're going to build an entirely new political movement. It's everything related to jobs. We're just going to throw it up against the wall and see if it sticks. It will be as exciting as the 1930s, greater than the regular revolution, conservatives plus populists in an economic nationalist movement. But the Bannon pick was just the beginning. Now Trump has added three more deplorable figures to his administration, retired General Michael Flynn, Kansas Congressman Mike Pompeo, and Alabama Senator Jeff Beauregard Sessions III. Flynn, who will serve as Donald Trump's national security advisor, is a raging Islamophobe who said on Twitter that fear of Muslims is rational. His, view, uh, his views on Islam are so extreme that he had to be forced out of the Defense Intelligence Agency during the Obama administration. Mike Pompeo, who Trump wants to be his CIA director, is another far-right hawk. He's an original member of the Tea Party and thinks Edward Snowden should be executed. And then there's Jeff Sessions, Trump's pick for attorney general. Sessions, whose full name is Jefferson Beauregard Sessions III, is opposed to almost all kinds of illegal immigration and has a history of making bigoted statements like, I thought the KKK were okay until I learned that they smoke pot. I'm not kidding. He's seriously supposed to have said that. And it's one of the reasons the Senate decided back in 1986 that he was too racist to be a federal judge. Not too racist, however, for President-elect Donald Trump. Which raises the question, just what does this say about our country, that an Islamophobe, someone who thinks dissidents should be executed, and a KKK apologist are about to be in charge of the national security and law enforcement agencies of our government. This path forward, this path forward, yes. I, all, folks are uh, apoplectic, upset, mad, angry. Be. Anytime you vote for the lesser of the two evils, you evil yourself. That's how Hitler came to power. Hmm. Okay? We don't see that. But you got to be evil. Here's a guy who rapes a woman once a month, another guy who rapes a woman once a day, and you got to pick one to babysat for you, you're evil. And that's what America, that's how Hitler came to power. See, few people know Hitler won that election by 288 votes, okay? And almost wiped the world out. So you can get by with that with the church, but you can't get by with that with the universe that made the moon, the sun, and the stars. And that's where we are. You got people who are concerned in terms of where do we go from here? You don't go nowhere. It's not your business. Hmm. Not your business. If, if, if. If Trump, if you ever saw Trump's television shows, brilliant. So how do you get so stupid all at once? Hmm? If I went to apply for a job collecting garbage, they would ask me to bring in my last year's tax return. You run for president, he don't have to bring his in, and y'all tolerate it, and don't know where it's going? Hmm? That's what it's about. That's what it's about. What do you say to that activist, to that young person, to that elder who's saying, Okay, what do I do for the next four years? You can do nothing. You're not going to make four years. This country won't make four years. It's over. Now, when you say it's over, what does that mean? It means decline. The Romans, the Greeks, the Egyptians, all of them fell. Okay? All of them fell. You see it. So what should we do? Because <laughs> Jim over here talks about the resistance. Please. They had a resistance with, uh, with even going against Hitler. Please. <laughs> the Jews didn't know what Hitler was doing. Okay. Our problem is we think we part of this government, and you're not. Yes, sir. But God destroyed Babylon completely. You can go to Iraq now and 
visit Babylon. It's only 55 miles south of Baghdad and nothing is there. Nothing is there. How completely displeased was God with Babylon. But, but, but Babylon had a daughter. And that daughter is found in the book of Revelations in the 18th chapter. It's called the Mystery Babylon. And it's said of the Mystery Babylon. And an angel cried mightily with a strong voice saying, Babylon is fallen and is become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Come out lest you be partakers of her sins and her plagues, for her sins have reached unto heaven. Who is that mystery? Babylon. And he showed me all of California. Do you see what I've shown you? This is a Sodom and Gomorrah. Their sins have reached God. And God has decided to punish them by fire. He came and showed me Las Vegas. This is a Sodom and Gomorrah. And one day it will burn. He came and showed me New York. This is New York. This is a Sodom and Gomorrah. And one day it will burn. And then he showed me Florida. This is Florida. This is a Sodom and Gomorrah. And in one day it will burn. But what will you do with me, I said. I told you to be quiet. And he brought me back to the place we left. He said, now we can talk. I brought you to this country because I love this country. I love the people in this country. And through your mouth, I want to wake up a lot of people. How can you wake them through my mouth when I can't understand anyone? You don't worry about that. I'll prepare some more for you to speak through. You reach television, radio, churches, but tell them everything I tell you. Again, he said, America will burn. But how can America burn when it's so powerful, I said. He said, tell them as I tell you. Hide nothing. If you will try to hide anything, I will punish you harshly. The Russian spies have figured out where the most powerful nuclear plants in America are. When Americans will think it's peace and quiet, and they rule the world, then from the ocean, out of Cuba, Nicaragua, Nicaragua America, Central, Central America, America, Mexico, Mexico. they will bombard the nuclear plants in America, and America will burn. A potential showdown is looming now as Iranian President Hassan Rouhani warns that Iran will not allow President-elect Donald Trump to rip up the agreement that they made with six countries in the nuclear deal. He never mentioned Mr. Trump by name. He only referred to him as some man who'd been elected in the United States. But that man said repeatedly on the campaign trail that if elected, his number one priority would be to dismantle this deal with Iran. I have been in business a long time. I know deal making. And let me tell you, this deal is catastrophic for America, for Israel, and for the whole of the Middle East. Rouhani is threatening a swift and prompt response if President Obama signs a bill that would extend some U.S. sanctions on Iran by about 10 years. Rouhani claims that violates the Iran deal, but the White House says the opposite. 
But there is no doubt Russia is looking to expand its borders. It already took over Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula. And earlier this year, Russia announced plans to build its military presence worldwide. Officials say that they're in talks with all of these countries about building bases. Some of them just a short flight from the United States, like Cuba, Nicaragua, and Venezuela. These are international waters. One obstacle for Russia is refueling. That's why Russia's military is in talks with Cuba and Venezuela for air basing rights. Pentagon officials don't see the move as a serious threat, but it is a reminder that Putin is trying to make his military more visible and more assertive. In fact, last September, Russian bear bombers, the strategic bombers that can carry nuclear weapons, reportedly practiced cruise missile strikes against the U.S. ship.